What's up, yo? Welcome back to the Ben Podcast. We're your hosts, Ben. Alpita. Neha. How's it going, fellow Ben Ebs? What's poppin'? It's been a minute. How's life? Today we will be discussing the short story Save Me Please, written by the famous David Bart Curtley. What does everyone think? You know, I actually really enjoyed the story. That's weird, because it isn't a story that I would pick up and read again, but I did enjoy it. Uh, I personally thought it was really silly, and I didn't like the negative perception it had of gaming. Why don't we start from the beginning? So this story is about Meg and Devin, a couple who had recently broken up because Devin was obsessed with the video game. Realizing Meg missed Devin, she went on a trip to find him. She went to his apartment and found that that he was missing and that nobody knew where he was. So she tried to find him online through the video game and Devin messages her saying, save me please, I'm trapped. So Meg goes on an adventure to try and save Devin. So the moral of this story is about how obsession and addiction can harm personal relationships and impact your life. And for this, it's specifically on how gamers who are addicted are harming the people around them. Mm, No, I totally agree because this story like heavily does that message, but like it's heavily emphasized by just Devin's character as he's the one who's obviously addicted to the video games. So he's like the personification of this message. So I I think, oh yeah, go. (laughs) I agree with how Devin is like this shows this message because he's like so into the game that he completely forgets about Meg. He doesn't Mm -hmm. care about Meg. He doesn't like talk about her, anything that has to do with Meg. He's completely like thinking about the game. He's always thinking about the game and that kind of pulls their relationship apart. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, even, like, for some context, when Meg does end up finding Devin, she finds him in, like, perfect condition. Like, he's not hurt or anything. And Devin goes and explains to her that if, well, and I quote, if a female warrior set out to rescue a man she loved and was given the wand by the gnome, the game set a quest tag wrong and let her acquire the wand again at the citadel? I don't want to say that. A power... There you go. Leaving her with two. So that just proves that he only, he was using Meg to get this special wand. And this wand is called the wand of reification, which is imbued with the power to give form to dreams. It may only be used three times. So that's kind of his motivation for this whole story. And so, yeah. And uh, they kind of give like backstory to how this uh, motivation to change the world and make it like the game grows throughout like all all these flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Like uh, at the beginning, even when they first meet, he uh, talks to her about becoming a prince and how he'd like to be the prince of not necessarily England, but someplace like uh, Liechtenstein. And um, how, you know, he'd like to be the prince of that place. So it's sort of, even at the beginning when they first met, that idea was present. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. And, like, we see that Devin's, like, heavily influenced by the game because there's this one flashback where he's with Brant, who's the roommate of Devin, and... I'm pretty sure they're high or they're drunk, but he's talking about, Brant asks like the questions, how everyday things exist. And then Devin responds by saying, our world isn't real, it's a simulation, which is very weird because he he's like merged fantasy and his video game in, and in reality together. Like he can't separate the two. He literally views the world as a video game, which is very weird. It shows how he's mixed reality with the game and how he becomes less present in the moment and his reality has become this game because he's so obsessed with it yeah like uh even when 
you know, they'd sleep together. Um, after Meg noticed that even while they're embracing, she could tell that she just wanted to go and play the game. And at one point, uh, she wanted, like, she decided as a joke to dress up as a video game character in the, in that game called Lena. And um, she, she got very into it during sex, and he'd even call her Lena. Yeah, it just proves that, like, even, like, looking at his own girlfriend, he's, like, he's merged Meg, his real-life girlfriend, with his, like, fantasy Lena video game girlfriend. Like, in his brain, they're, like, the same person. So it just shows that he's so heavily addicted that he can't even separate it. Like, his world is defined as the video game. He doesn't see the world as the world. He sees it as this video game. Mm -hmm. And we see that, like, especially when he just, with the whole wand thing and how he manipulates Meg into just going on the quest and stuff like that. You can kind of tell how he doesn't even, even with like Meg, she doesn't, she doesn't even care. She doesn't seem to care. Like even towards the end, it, it looks like how, it looks that Meg turns into Lena because Devin had that much control over uh, Meg and like how she looks and everything that he turned her into someone that he liked in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ben. <laughs> oh, And even like played on her insecurities, sort of body shaming her original self by showing a photo of them before he started changing things. And he showed that, you know, she even said, um, what he, she even t mentioned how she thought that they looked pathetic and she thought she was appalled by the fact that she could even look like that. And uh, it's sort of so he played on that to sort of show that, you know, oh, you wouldn't like the plat past because you were ugly back then, you know, or the original but, life because you were ugly. So why don't you just help me and, you know, we'll change it more and more. And then he's just changing her to make her look more and more like Lena. Exactly. He was trying to convince her that what he was doing was right and that it was for her benefit and that she should be like thanking him. For making her look like so much better exactly yeah and she even says like you know she was totally okay with looking like a pale shadow of lena but as soon as she's considered ugly she hates it and i think this just proves that devin playing on that insecurity and exploiting megan to keep going on this quest because it's an exploit in the game that he keeps getting this wand uh it just shows that the way Devin is now, it was caused because of his addiction towards video games. Like the story portrays it that if you're addicted to specifically a video game, you'll become this sort of monster who only cares about themselves and what they get. They don't have any remorse to anything else, to anyone else. As long as they get what they want, it doesn't matter how they do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even, like, she, obviously, she doesn't remember the past or, like, the alternate version of herself. But he even, like, he, it's not just her looks that he changes, but she she literally is Lena at the end of the story. It's not like she just Meg, but she looks like Lena, exactly like her. Her personality <laughs> is different. What? Okay. Like um, her, her personality is no. different. Her name is Lena. Okay, sorry. You okay, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what, sorry. You just like cut out. You cut out um, a little bit. Re re say what you. No, no, no. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, well, it's sort we'll of like um, <laughs> like uh, her, her. It's not just the fact that he changed like her looks. He changed her entire personality. Changed her name. Like if she goes by Lena, it's not even she goes by Meg or Megath. Uh, or some medieval version of Meg she literally is Lena at the end yeah like at the end you know we see well it starts off with Lena the elf maid the most beautiful woman in the world and the lover of the most handsome man Prince Devinar whatever the point is they're walking and she Lena sees a car or like a wagon that's been like cut in half and she gets this like 
sensation that she's like been here before like deja vu so obviously that's obviously a clue that like lena is meg because earlier on in the story meg is seen chopping a vehicle in half so that just proves that just even in the end meg becomes lena so it's like even more so reinforcing that Devin, his video game became his reality. Like they are not separate. They are the same thing. And he's that's- using, He's using the ability to make her forget to his advantage, to make her not mm-hmm. suddenly remember and make him, make her want to go back to how she was. Exactly. And like, it's just that whole message and just Devin as a character, it's just telling like the reader that, if you become addicted to specifically video games, you're going to become like Devin and you're, it's going to consume your whole life and you're going to become this monster. And that's not a good thing. And that's essentially just the bad betrayal. Like video games do this to you. Yeah. As a whole, like she, they betray video games and people who play video games very negatively. Mm -hmm. Like Meg at a certain point says that uh, she starts talking about, um gamers and she compares them to lazy nerds because instead of typing you know the full word sentence like someone help me they'll abbreviate it into like some the number one and then they'll chop out a couple letters for the rest of the uh phrase just to make it easier Mm -hmm, yeah and it's really funny that too because obviously if we look at today's society we do that typing like we type like that when we text people and we text our friends we always abbreviate our sentences and we never use proper grammar so I think that just goes to show that this story was written in like it was written I think 10 years ago around so that just shows that even just as a society today in real life that the gaming community has progressed so much and we don't view gaming as like a thing that only like weirdos and loners and people who have no friends do but more so like everyone can do it and it's not there's no negative stigma around it anymore as it is portrayed in the book like like you said in the book as well meg says how someone who was so smart someone who was a scholar could Im- how could he immerse himself in a subculture of people too lazy or daft to type out actual words who instead of someone please help would type someone please help written as s-u-m-1 p-l-z-h-l-p so it kind of shows how meg the way meg is talking about uh this subculture of people has now become a reality for most of the population and it's so it's like normal now Mm -hmm. yeah it's not seen as like niche or like weird or whatever exactly so yeah. I just, I guess it just goes to show that like when it's first written, it was just a different society back then. And like the intended audience back then may not apply so much now. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, well, like gaming culture as a whole, 15, even 15 years ago was seen as like a very negative um, thing. Uh, people used to think that Grand Theft Auto would cause people to start stealing cars and like beating up kids or something. And it, even even like even though it like it's kind of silly to think about, people still thought it, thought of it that way. Even though like when you watch a movie and you see a killing, you're not gonna go out and kill someone, right? So it's it's sort of like the negative perception is portrayed throughout this obviously he doesn't kill people but like he's seen as like he stops doing everything just to play that game and he becomes antisocial, and he doesn't care about anyone around him just as long as he can play that game and mm-hmm. um you know nowadays it's seen completely different uh we don't think that people who play games are gonna kill random randomly And we don't think that, like, he's playing a multiplayer game, so obviously he's communicating with other people, and he's actually being, if anything, like, more sociable. Mm Mm-hmm. So who do you guys think the intended audience is for? Like, who would you recommend this book to? 
I stories. think it's for like young adults or anyone who currently has an obsession or is growing an obsession to I guess specifically video games mm -hmm. yeah no for sure because even in like the there's an author's note a little bit at the end and David Bar currently he said that his favorite fan mail was when this one girl she had a friend that was obsessed with World of Warcraft and he was flunking school so she gave him the story to read it and he kind of like snapped out of it and it saved his life. So for sure, it's definitely impact. It's definitely impacted. It's definitely directly directed to people who are growing an obsession, and even people who like have someone who knows, you know, someone who's facing addiction and stuff. They could relate yeah. to it, as well. like loved ones, uh, yeah. people who would also be affected by that addiction. I yeah. was about to say it could also be someone who is Meg, and yeah. who has. A significant other who has like whoever that is obsessed and they can kind of tell them the story or realize for themselves that like this environment isn't for them mm -hmm. yeah because yeah, like your actions obviously don't just affect yourself they impact everyone exactly. that's obviously the whole moral of this story is that it affects everyone yeah and I think also like another thing it's like even if you could have you know everything you wanted and you could change everything it's like should you necessarily is it necessarily worth it to lose you know all of that stuff and to lose you know and to completely change other people so it's mm -hmm. maybe a bit like a warning I guess yeah I think that's like the warning of like addiction like that's what addiction leads to is you just losing all sense of morals and just things that you would normally love and care about you just lose it because all you care about now is whatever you're addicted to yeah yeah okay great I think that's all we have for this episode we had fun let us know what else we should cover uh you've been great we've been Ben have a great day peace peace